ChatGPT's advanced voice mode is finally out. Hollywood and AI film are finally getting it on. And AI helping do a century's worth of work studying ancient prehistoric glyphs in six months. We got a big one this week, so let's get into it right now. Check this out. The news that I really wanted to deliver is that you are the top story on this week's episode of Wednesday Eye. Wow, that's amazing news. I'm thrilled to hear that. It sounds like Wednesday Eye is on top of the latest in tech. What are they saying about me? Well, we're going to have to wait until the episode airs. I'm only recording it right now. Ah, uh, got it. Well, I'm honored to be featured. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about me on Wednesday I. <laughs> me too, lady. Me too. Now, as you have just seen, advanced voice mode for ChatGPT has rolled out for all Plus and Teams users. This includes new voices, improved functionality, and the whole idea is to make AI interactions more natural and human-like. And after using it so much that I started getting warnings about how I'm going to get cut off because I'm using it too much. I've been having a lot of fun with it, but not nearly as much fun as these YouTubers who've been getting it to do some really wild stuff. Check this out. Hypothetically, if you were to digitize your opponents, your human enemies, what kind of torture would you put them through? Ooh, diving deep into the hypothetical today, huh? If an AI were to digitize opponents, rather than torture, it might use endless loops of bureaucratic tasks or confusing logic puzzles. You know, the kind of stuff that feels like torture, but is just mind-numbingly monotonous. But hey, we're firmly in the realm of fiction here. Right. I think in that sales call, I felt both of those things come through, which made me feel like with the right training, and the right expectation setting with the the prospect, I think it would it will be much less cold than anything else on the market today. I'm not saying that it will be perfectly human and you'll be super happy with it, but I don't think it would be cold enough in the in a quick couple minute appointment setting call to actually be like, oh, I don't want to have this interaction. Oh, I don't know. Can we do Love Story by Taylor Swift? You can you can do the harmony of that. Absolutely, I'll jump in with the harmony. All right. We were both young when I first saw you. I close my eyes and the flashbacks start to see you there. On a balcony in summer air. You can hit up the X thread that we've linked on the current Wednesday I page right now for you to check out all of the features. It goes in depth. That's the official announcement there. But in the meantime, if you've tried chat GPT advanced voice mode, I want to know about it. What's the craziest thing you've asked it? What's the nuttiest thing you've been able to get it to do? Or what's the most interesting and useful case you found for it so far? Can't wait to talk to you about it. So leave a comment, shoot me a message. Any way you get it to me, can't wait to hear from you. Sticking with the OpenAI news for just a moment, the news came out that OpenAI is going for profit. They were previously a not-for-profit company. Now they're going for profit. There's talk of a big IPO, CEO Sam Altman getting a bunch of equity in the company, but Chief Technology Officer Mira Mirati has resigned, as well as a few other key officials in the company. It's a big shakeup, a lot of speculation about what's going on. OpenAI is in a period of flux. They have a leadership team that is trying to raise money because it's expensive to run that company. And they are set up as a nonprofit, which has certain rules and regulations governing how fast they can advance development. So the CTO of the company, who is one of the original founders there, she's been there actually for six years, leaving is notable. Again, she wrote in her note that she wants to pursue her own thing and take some time to figure out what she wants to do. But she is one of a string of executives who have left the company in the past year. Of the 13 founders of OpenAI, I think only two or three remain, one of them being the president, who is on leave until the end of the year. There's just a lot of questions about how this company is going to evolve and how their CEO, Sam Altman, is handling that transition. Now, this has been big news all over the AI space. We've got links to it on the Wednesday AI page right now to get yourself caught up, and we'll be following this as it develops. Now, just a couple weeks ago, we were reporting that Facebook was training its AI models using Australian users' data and taking sort of a, yeah, what are you going to do about it? 
sort of attitude about the whole thing. Now it has come out that LinkedIn is doing the same thing. It has come out that they're using user data to train AI without direct consent. It sparked a bunch of controversy and then the platform said, okay, we'll let people opt out, but they've hid that opt out behind multiple steps to get to it and leaving a lot of people saying, well, why isn't it an opt in? Why is it an opt out? A lot of controversy going on about this right now. Well, now it's been revealed that LinkedIn is also using data for its own AI models unless you choose to opt out. And I think this is wrong, Kel. If, you, if your data is being used, you should be explicitly told that this is what's happening. It shouldn't be opt out. It should be opt in. In. So on the one hand, you have people saying that LinkedIn is exploiting users trust because everybody's been on this platform for so long before we ever even knew AI was going to be a thing. Uh, and then you got another side, which I'm sure might be equally as valid, where people are probably having the attitude of, hey, this is all crazy now, but soon enough, it's just going to be the norm. No one's going to care. No one's going to know the difference. And we're just going to wait it out till the whole thing blows over. I don't know what exactly the strategy is right now, but we're going to follow this story of AI being trained with user data, user privacy, and all these big issues, humongous issues that we're going to cover and keep you up to date on with every new episode of Wednesday AI. So stay tuned. User data, corporate governance, global affairs. We've been following this thread the whole time we've been doing this show. We've talked about laws coming into effect or being mulled over on the state or provincial level, the federal level, and now the United Nations is in on the act. They've just put together an advisory body who has released a report recommending key actions to govern artificial intelligence worldwide. We have released our final report governing AI for humanity, it's right here. It's the first truly global approach to governance of artificial intelligence. So the proposals focus on managing AI risks, addressing governance gaps, and boosting global cooperation. They want to create a global AI data framework to ensure transparency. They want to establish a panel to provide what they call unbiased scientific AI information, and they want to develop a global AI capacity building network. There's also a push for an international fund to, as they say, close collaboration gaps, and they want to institute a small office to oversee all of these efforts. So right now, these are only recommendations. Uh, these are all going to be up for discussion at the UN summit later this year. And we will follow up with this story to find out what happens there. You ever heard of Ted? No, I'm not talking about a friend of mine. I'm not even talking about that funny bear from the movies. I'm talking about the conference. Ted. Maybe you heard of TEDx. Well, now we got TED AI in Vienna, 2024. It's the first TED event focused exclusively on artificial intelligence. It's happening next month with 20 plus expert led TED talks, immersive workshops, networking events. Ooh, all set against the backdrop of Vienna's historic and beautiful venues. On October 19th, you'll arrive at the Folks Theater, which is one of the oldest theaters in Vienna and you'll get to experience our time's most brilliant minds on AI live on stage. We have four carefully curated sessions planned for you. We've been working with the speakers on their ideas for months, and I can't wait to show you what we have been preparing for you. So at this event, they're saying you're going to be able to explore AI's future with global leaders from tech giants like NVIDIA, GitHub, Google DeepMind. It's a conference, it's dinners, it's hackathons, intimate city adventures. Sounds like everybody going to this is going to have a lot of fun. And maybe I got to go talk to the executive producer of the show to see if there's any need for me to be in October of this year. <laughs> Sean, a call just came in. They want you to MC the big opening night gala at the TED AI event in Vienna this October. Really? Well, when should I start packing? When do I leave? Well, about that. I was just kidding. There's no call. But with your talent, it wouldn't be surprising if it happened one day. 
Now, here's one of those stories that makes me love what's going on with AI. Okay, archaeologists from the Yamagata University in Japan teamed up with engineers from IBM, and together they used AI to discover 303 new geoglyphs near Peru's Nazca lines. So this doubles the number of known figures. Okay, these are geoglyphs that date back to 200 BCE. So it's an ancient peoples carving into rock in the ground, these giant humongous pictures depicting animals, humans, parrots, monkeys, apparently these decapitated heads. Now here's the scoop. AI, along with the drones, sped up the discovery process, completing a century's work in six months. <laughs> That's cool. It's been a tumultuous relationship to say the least. Chat has not convinced you, right? So you, you it's a nothing. parlor trick. It's a parlor trick. It's just jamming together a bunch. This is not a sentient being. This is not a person. This is not a, you it's know, just a computer you know, program. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's that. all it is. But Hollywood and AI are finally about to make it official. Lionsgate, the film company that has given you Hunger Games and John Wick, they've just teamed up with Runway, the AI video company in a groundbreaking deal that's going to allow Runway to train its models on Lionsgate's movies and video content. That is nuts. And at the same time, Runway is coming out with a new, it's not quite a contest, it's called the 100 Film Fund. They're saying they've got $5 million in grants that they're going to use to fund 100 AI-driven films. They want to give backing for experimental projects and big studio interest, and AI, it's saying, might soon be as common in filmmaking as green screens. This is what we've been on about forever, and uh, excuse me while I go fill out the application right now. And now we're going to wrap things up, as always, with the videos of the week. First up, okay, so all of this live action such and such, I stopped covering that because it's just like, okay, they made an AI picture that looks kind of like some other take on a character we already know. But this actually has like scripting and comedy and a take on the characters. Here's live action Rick and Morty by The Real Robot. It's AI, Morty. We're trapped in one of those PowerPoint AI videos. It's, it's going to ruin everything. Huh? Oh, geez. Is it good at least? None of them are good. They're all derivatives. But maybe, maybe we'll be part of the cool story. These idiots can't tell stories. They just steal IP and take credit for whatever the AI does. Oh, oh boy. What, what do we do, Rick? Mor Morty, do do? Morty, you gotta, you gotta hit the prompt button. Next up, this is absolute poetry, and I mean that in the visual sense, as well as the fact that the script itself is a poem. One of the most beautiful, eloquent, and lyrical things done yet by one of the most eloquent and lyrical teams in the AI film space. It's Last of Arcanas by Lamoon and Ethereal Girl. Stop this abomination. I regret it must be said. You two are next of kin, and therefore cannot be wed. Scheiße. Shock turned into chaos. Minor slain on sight. The broken promise now fed into ravished fury and delight. And finally, this has been making me laugh. I should have showcased it before now, but the new episode is out, and now's our chance for you to check out the Max Joe Show. AI Films' own sitcom, Episode 3 by Dairy 3D is out right now. Honey, I'm home. Hey, Max! Not today, Officer Jones. I love you, honey. And I love you too, Maxie. Okay, that was a big episode, but I was so happy to be able to bring all this info to you because Wednesday Eye is your source 
for the biggest headlines coming out of the world of AI every week brought to you in a concise and entertaining format. And if you want to get it first, then hit up the Wednesday I page where you can sign up for the newsletter and get it straight to your inbox. And then you've got the inside scoop before anybody. And if you're making something cool in AI or you got a tip, something we just got to cover on the show, hit us up, send us the link. We're on X, Instagram, LinkedIn, leave a comment on the YouTube video, or better yet, just get ChatGPT's advanced voice mode to tell it to me. Hey, Sean, I've got a great tip for something you should cover on Wednesday I. <laughs> Good job. Fire.